So we're here at the University of Louisville's Moore Observatory in Oldham County near, near Louisville. This is a fairly rural, uh, quiet location where we can do experiments with gravity and uh, looking at the forces between masses in the laboratory. So what you have here in the image is a Cavendish balance. It has a large mass, that's the ball that's in front of the device, and another one behind it and then two smaller masses that are inside that are pulled by those larger ones outside. The gravitational pull of the masses on one another will cause the inside pair of balls, which are like a dumbbell hanging by a thin thread, will cause that device to rotate. You see a red spot, that's a laser coming from your left, which strikes the tiny mirror hanging on that thread and the light from that laser reflects back to a wall to your left. So I'm going to pan around and show you the spot of the laser on the wall. So now you can see the laser spot right here. The light from the laser is going off to your right, strikes that small mirror, and comes back and makes the spot that you see there. It's jiggling just a little bit because of tiny vibrations in the building, mostly from me moving around close by. Now I'm going to mark with a felt marker exactly where that laser spot is at the moment. And then we'll come back after we change the position of the masses and see what happens to that spot. Now I'm just going to reach in here and gently push on this to move the ball over here all the way over until it's in contact with the plastic. And that exerts a torque in that direction that should cause the pair of balls on the dumbbell to swing to a new equilibrium point. So it'll take a while for this to settle down. It's going to bounce around because I touched the table. But we'll swing back and take another look at the laser and then watch it settle in. So we've let this settle for a while. And you can see the mark is now to the left as we look at it here from this camera view of the place it was when, um, when the weights were centered. So we've exerted a torque by switching the masses that twist the support on that, um, that bar and that moves the mirror and causes the laser beam to go over here leftward of where it was before at that black mark you see there now. So I'm going to take a felt marker and mark this new position. And then I'll go over and rotate the masses to um, change the torque in the other direction and then we'll see what happens. Well now things have settled down pretty well. I'm just going to take a tape measure and put it underneath these marks so you can see what the distances are. It's pretty symmetrical. I'm not doing a precise measurement here. So, sorry it's upside down, but I'm on the wrong side. And just for the record, I'll put another black mark where that is now. Be equal, but they're not quite. So we'll just put the tape back up here again so you can see one more time where those marks are. The two extreme marks are the two settings for the weight for the masses which are pulling on the, um, on the bar. So we'll go and take another look at those in a moment. But in the meantime, I'm going to switch it 
and let it come back again so you can see it move. Now as you watch, I'm going to move the mass from one side to the other. I've jiggled it a little bit. So this makes it vibrate some, but I'm exerting a torque because we've switched the position of the large masses. The gravitational pull of those masses is now twisting the support fiber in the opposite sense. And you can see that the laser spot is moving back into the former direction that we had when we started. So it's consistent. So now we're watching it come back again. Once again, it may reach a limit and bounce before it actually slows down to a rest. That's what happened last time. Yeah, a little bit of a bounce there. Now the laser spot has reached its maximum over on the right and has started to return. It's going in the direction now that the gravitational torque is twisting the fiber. 
we should accelerate until the twist of the fiber is sufficient to counter that torque. Slow it and then start it back in the other direction. Yeah, it reached a limit there again. We'll let it run for a while and come back to it. So this is actually a day later than the last recording. And it's settled in back at the old mark again. Perhaps even a little more symmetrically than it was when we started. So this just demonstrates how gravity affects masses in the real world. And I'm going to mark that spot again so you can see clearly where both marks are. Now I'll just put the uh, tape up here. My presence is disturbing the whole thing just a little bit. But now you can see with the tape measure. It's about 8 centimeters all the way across from the extremes left and right of center. Let's go back around and look again at the masses that are causing this distortion. So I'm just going to pan the camera around and we'll take another shot at it. Now from this side you can see um, how the masses were arranged to make the laser spot come over to our left. We were looking to the right of where we were before. And you can also see that I can put a tape measure up and we can measure the distance from the mirror to the screen, which is something we'll need to know. So I'm just going to put the end of the tape measure over here, and you can see how that's done at this end, without touching anything. And then we'll come back and look at it at the other end, see what the actual distance is. Now we need to measure how far the screen is from the mirror. So I've got a tape measure here and it has metric scale on it. I'll just carefully put it on the tabletop. Right, try it again. Go all the way over to where the mirror was and pull the tape back until it reaches the screen. Something like Right about there, where my finger is. It's about 88 inches, roughly 223 and a half centimeters from the mirror to where the laser spot is hitting the screen. So now, up close, we see the details of the Cavendish balance with the large metal ball suspended on a platform underneath it in front of the balance. There's another one on the back side that you can't see because it's behind the, uh, this cover on the back of that device. Inside you can see two smaller balls and they're suspended on a fiber so that the pair of them can rotate around and the one on the near side which is close to the large ball 
is attracted to it by gravity and that causes a torque which twists the fiber. The big ball on the back that you can't see acts on the other small ball to add to that torque, so they're really a pair of them doubling the effect. When the mirror rotates, the laser spot that we see on a screen will move and we can measure the rotation of that dumbbell by the motion of that spot. It amplifies the motion to make it more readily measurable. So now you see the marks that we made in the course of this experiment and the laser below it. You can zoom in on those marks and take a closer look at them. The mark on the right is the position we previously measured for the stable equilibrium of the spot with the torque exerted, as you saw with the ball a few moments ago, to twist the laser spot to our right as we look at the screen. The torque is pulling on the right side of that dumbbell in a Cavendish balance. The laser spot is pretty stable right now. If I were to move that big ball to the other side, then the spot would swing over and be over the mark on your left because of the torque that's exerted by gravity on those balls. We can measure the actual force by determining the properties of the suspending fiber. That's one of the more difficult aspects of this experiment. We do that by looking at how the whole system oscillates. Now, Right now it's pretty stable. But if I were just to move it just a little bit, it would start to oscillate. So we're going to try to do that. And we'll watch the oscillation to see if we can measure the period, that is how long it takes to complete a cycle of that oscillation. So I've rotated the large ball platform to move the large ball to the center of the device, so the pair of them are really not exerting a torque on it at all. And we should see the mirror slowly rotate to bring the spot back toward the center. We expect it to overshoot the center mark and then return back to the center as it tries to establish an equilibrium. So we're going to record this and let you measure it to find the period of the oscillation.
So we're returning to take one last look at the experiment now. You see the masses are arranged so that there's no net torque with the mass in front of and behind the device. And I'm going to pan around and look at the final resting place of the laser spot. And you can see it's near the center. You just would have seen a video of it coming to that equilibrium position.